Here in San Diego at the 2010 ONS Conference, joining us from the Windy City is Nancy Anderson, adult nurse practitioner at the Robert H. Lurie Cancer Center at Northwestern University. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Several years ago, a study showed that IP chemotherapy had an improvement in overall survival for women newly diagnosed with advanced stage ovarian cancer. What have been the challenges with adopting this into the standard of care? Yes, in um, January 2006, uh, there was a major clinical trial by the Gynecologic Oncology Group published in the New England Journal of Medicine. That study demonstrated an improved progression-free survival of women with, in, with ovarian cancer having had received IP chemo or intraperitoneal chemotherapy over standard IV chemotherapy by um, the progression-free interval was, uh, survival interval was 65.6 .6 months, which was much improved over previous intraperitoneal chemotherapy studies. Um, actually, by, and it was 16 months of a overall better survival um, from standard treatment with IV chemotherapy. Um, the challenges, though, of that protocol have been many. Um, the study produced many toxicities for patients, particularly um, peripheral neuropathy, GI um, nausea, vomiting, um, increased abdominal discomfort with um, an intra-abdominal portacath placement, um, as well as uh, physicians being uncomfortable as to how to dose patients, how to schedule patients. Um, a third factor would be um, timing of patients uh, to nurses, um, developing the right amount of space and clinical skill provide, to be able to provide those, that treatment to patients. So yes, it has proposed many challenges, but we have made much progress in intraperitoneal chemotherapy, and I think the progression-free survival improvement um, would warrant um, institutions um, attempting to utilize this uh, regimen. Um, currently, there's an ongoing GOG 252 study, um, which Northwestern is participating in, which is a three-arm study that is also adding in ta targeted therapy. So now we'll be able to see, does um, IP chemotherapy still stand up to uh, standard IV treatment along with targeted therapy? Um, so we're waiting on those results. Nancy, what is the role of Avastin in ovarian cancer? Avastin uh, is an anti-angiogenesis medication that um, is very, well, we're finding to be effective in ovarian cancer. In the recent trial by the GOG-218, um, they recently demonstrated the study is still, um, will be presented at ASCO in June 2010 in Chicago, but it has proven to um, demonstrate a increased progression-free survival in women that had, had received bevacizumab with um, standard treatment as well as 22 months, a, 20, a total of 16 cycles of maintenance therapy with bevacizumab. Um, the role of Avastin is to, um, that ovarian cancer produces abundant, abundant amounts of VEGF, which VEGF um, brings about vessel formation and tumor progression in ovarian cancer. So the goal of Avastin is to provide, um, to inhibit that angiogenesis and therefore um, improve the progression-free survival of women with ovarian cancer. We still await the um, data from the GOG presentation of their data in June um, as to the overall, if, if it has improved the overall survival of those women with advanced ovarian cancer. You know all of the talk about personalized medicine. What is this to you and how do you apply it to patients with ovarian cancer? Well, personalized medicine in ovarian cancer is important because we don't have the same specificity and sensitivity of our tumor markers for patients. Um, we need to continue to develop um, proteomics, genomics, and gene expression profiling, our understanding of all of those, as well as chemotherapy assay testing to better understand personalized medicine. I think we have to think of it as the developing the right treatment, the right dose, the right schedule 
the right drug for that patient in order to improve their survival with ovarian cancer. And for an example, um, with gene expression profiling, we recently found the human epididym epididymis protein 4, which helps, is only um, produced by ovarian cancer patients, specifically serous and endometrioid tumors are uh, very, uh, produce large amounts of HE4. Um, so therefore, we're using that right now as a biomarker, um, which is pretty outstanding in ovarian cancer because we, we have looked for something for quite a long time. And now we can say, um, we have that along with our standard tumor marker. So that's an ex example of personalized medicine looking at and really understanding proteomics and developing um, better detection of ovarian cancer. Thanks for discussing some of the hot topics in ovarian cancer. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Nancy Anderson from the Robert H. Laurie Cancer Center at Northwestern University here on OccuView.tv.